judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. Now, I was listening to a Francis Chan message, and he, he, he spoke to me like I, I've read these words, but yet I took them for granted, to be honest with you. Because whenever Jesus says, it is of your benefit that I go, because how many times has anybody been in here and be like, Jesus, if you were just here with me so I could hear your voice, that'd be great. That'd be great. And Francis goes, but that's doubting what his word he said. He said, it is of greater benefit for you that I send the advocate. How? I can't touch him. Because he's, he's telling you that I won't just be with you. I will become in to you. I will be in you and in this world and in all the believers who believe in me. So the Holy Spirit becomes part of you. You get what I'm saying there? Jesus is saying it's better for me to go because I'm not within you right at this moment. I'm with you physically, tangibly, but I can't be across the seas right now. I'm still human in this moment, but I will send you help. And he will be the voice that you hear as you read the words to help understand this. I'm not going to leave you alone. He's part of the triune God, the Holy Spirit. He cannot, you know, Satan cannot stand against him. I want to take a quick survey. You know, God's holy. You trust his word. How many people are eternal? God. Oh, we're done. <laughs> he says, I'm going to send you somebody who I'm going to be with, be inside you. Wow. I don't know about you, but that gives me some comfort. Okay? He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. But understand that even inside that, you're not alone. We have this community that's sitting here today. All right? Uh, we're going to go back to 1 Peter 5, and we're going to read 8 again because I think it's important to understand that we are in a battle. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, but we're going to read 9 also. It says this, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. This is verse 9. Resist him, standing firm in, in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. All right? There's people in this room who have went through the same thing that you have gone through. There's people who are across the world who have went through the same thing that you're going through. And we are a community. This world's trying to isolate us. They're trying to pull us away. They're trying to get us to stay in our homes. Resist that because you are to be together. Because we can help each other. Okay? I hope you believe that. So there's, there's some things that you can do with your fellow believers. One, maybe somebody around here who has been through that same exact thing uh, can help you, help guide you, help walk with you together with that. Understand that you can go and you can look up. There's some books from some authors, from Christian believers who have wrote fantastic books. Um, and uh, there, it's not like you're cheating on God's word. Uh, they, they wrote it about his word and how we are to live in with his word. So you're not cheating on God's word. You're wanting to learn more about it that maybe the spirit has revealed to them that he has not to you yet. Okay? So there's some books that you can read on. There's, and if you don't like reading, I know a lot of people don't, um, one, you can get the aud audible books of that. Um, but also there's sermons and lectures. So as much as the internet can be a bad thing, it can be quite the blessing also. Okay, Because you can go online and you can hear lectures, you can hear podcasts, you can hear sermons of other ministers who are going through the same things that we are here. And they have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit also. And they may, get, may have some answer that the Spirit has revealed to them in the moment of their trial that you need to hear today. So, invest in his people. Invest in the word. Okay? I want to read for you 1 Corinthians 12 because I think it does quite a fantastic job of telling us that we are in a community of believers and that don't take anybody for granted. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12. And the title of this is Unity and Diversity in the Body because we are to be united as one body. 
Okay, reads this. It says, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all, uh, all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as, for the, the, as to the form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole world were an eye, where would we get the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would we get the sense of, t- of smell? But in fact, God placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker and indispensable um, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. You have a place in the community of God. You are important in the community of God. You have something that you can help somebody along with. Might be as simple as making a cup of coffee or being an ear. Maybe your brother or sister is going through something that's so devastating to them that all they need is to hear you hear your sweet voice saying hello, and then having the ear to be able to listen to them. Because as we've heard, Satan is sitting there prowling like a lion to come to devour each and every one of us. So remember, every morning you wake up, I'm in a battle. Don't let him win. I'm in a battle. Understand that we have a community of believers that are connected by the Holy Spirit. (laughs) That's amazing. I mean, the spirit of the living God in you. I can't quite wrap my mind around that. There's one thing I want you to realize about unity also, is that God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, is a community in itself. You ever thought of that? He doesn't get bored. He's a complete community. And you know what's really amazing? is he wants us all to be a part of that community and he wants our relationships to be as his community is going. I haven't quite got there yet, just 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 let you know. I'm being made perfect. I'm definitely not perfect yet. Um, But I'm in that process that the Holy Spirit is transforming. So if you can relate to to me with that, that you're not perfect, welcome. You're in good company. But I want to read to you, I know this one's going to be a little bit longer, um, and I, I, pretty much every time I feel like I preach, I talk about John chapter 17. Um, so God must be trying to speak to me for that, and you guys just get to hear it. <laughs> um, but I want you to hear the words of Jesus. It's Jesus' prayer before he goes to the Father. Yes, our Lord Jesus prays for you, and they wrote it down, thank you, Lord, because I need to hear this. Okay, and I want you to hear this. You can follow along with me if you want to, you know, take your time to, maybe you need to close your eyes and focus in on it. If you think you're going to fall asleep, don't close your eyes. I know, I'm sorry, I'm boring, Um, but that's all right. Uh, We'll get through this together. But I want to read John chapter 17, and I want us to take it in. I want you to hear the words that Jesus is saying to you, that that our Lord is praying for you. He prayed these for you, okay? And he says this, uh, John chapter 17, he says, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. We should pray that just, uh, just so you're aware. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those who have, you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought your glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus always had glory 
He left that for you. And six, we pick up, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and the glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. See, there you go. There's that unity there. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of the joy of my joy within me. I have given them your word and the world has aided them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as I have, even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that The love you have for me may be in them and I myself may be in them. See, Jesus prayed this prayer that we would be one body. He prays that we would have protection. But hear his prayer that he says the world has hated them. Okay, because there's a prince of this world and his name's Satan. He doesn't like you. And even if you're on his team, he don't like you either. And Jesus has overcome this world and he prays that we would be one body and of like mind. Does that mean we agree on everything? No. (laughs) No, we do not. But we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and that he has sent his spirit to help guide us in the direction of his, of what he desires in this world. And we may go through some hard times. Actually, more than likely you're going to. But understand that you're in a battle that has been fought from the beginning of time. But I do want to give you some little bit of ideas and some tips that I have experienced that have helped me to maybe not be so, get, you know, the, the word gets so dry. Okay, could I, could I give you some stuff that maybe you could use? And you probably already know this. You guys are probably all smarter than me. So you just, you know, hear me out. Okay. Read his word slowly. It's funny because we were talking in Sunday school this morning and my dad was teaching and we, we didn't talk about this. But he talked about how we need to maybe slow down reading his word. You don't have to take the whole book. You don't have to take the whole chapter. I mean, some people can take that all in. I cannot. I read it to help memorize some of the things, but a lot of times the really good and deep and rich things are read very slowly, very small portions. 
So take each word for what it's saying. You know, they have a, they have a, a, a practice called Lexio Divina, and that's where you take this passage and you read, you know, like three words, and then you stop, and you pray, you talk to God. What are you revealing to me in this? What do you have to say? Because let me tell you, you have probably missed something. <laughs> There's things I've read my entire life that he's revealed to me here more recently that I'm like, how did I miss that? <laughs> That's not something that I just like, just read through. That's something that I've read quite a bit and I've missed it. So, take your time. Slow down. This isn't a race. It's not like, hey, I've read the Bible so many times. No, he wants you to understand his word more so than to say that I've got this many times I've read through it. And so that's a bad thing to read through it. I love reading through it. He reveals to me every time I open up this book something new. Another thing, return to a gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, frequently. Okay? What, listen to, read the words that, of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and let me tell you, be wowed by what Jesus had done <laughs> and what is doing in your life. Be wowed by the miracles that he says. And if, 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 you don't read the, if you read the gospel and you're not wowed, read that story again because <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> God in flesh came to walk, to show you how to live your life and how to pray for your enemies? How anti-culture is that? I mean, goodness gracious, the Jews didn't think he was the Messiah. His people, the lineage that he came out of, they expected a warrior king. He's gonna come with a sword and he's gonna take us right back to Jerusalem right now. Jesus goes, I'm establishing a kingdom and here's how I win it. I'm going to die. Come again. I'm going to die in order to win. No, no. Where's your sword? Ah, my sword's my word. <laughs> but we've been told our life that he's going to come and he's going to slay all these people. He's going to be a mighty king, mightier than David. No, I'm going to die but I'm going to conquer the grave. You don't have to fear the death anymore. Read the stories and always be wowed because death couldn't hold perfection. Okay, believe his word. Believe his word. Hebrews 4, starting in verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active. Alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the God, or before the eyes of him who, to whom we give account. Let his word penetrate your heart. You know that sword I was talking about? It's his word. Let it penetrate your heart because it can go deep. Understand that it is a sword and sometimes that hurts. I'd say more than likely all the time it hurts. Um, but let that, let that transform you into what God is creating you to be. Let his word speak truth into your life and believe his word to be true. Because let me tell you, this world is trying so much to get us these new ideas. We're always about new, new, new. Great, great, great. Oh, you, you read that ancient book? Man, it's pretty old. Pretty old. Yeah. That's why I read it. Because it's remained true throughout the ages of time and through all these kingdoms that have went before. And his word still remains true to this day. Satan cannot squash this out. You know if they even got rid of every single Bible that we had throughout this world, there is things, there's hieroglyphics, there's things in, in statues, there's things in tombs that have written of his glory. There's hymnals that we have that was read by Gretchen here this morning that you cannot squash out God. It's impossible. I mean, goodness, he can make the rocks cry out if he needs to. But thanks God that we have this word with us. I mean, you can have it on your phone. It can read it to you. I encourage you to do that. Be invested in his word. It's old, yes, but it's remained true. 
and will continue to remain true. Trust his word. Proverbs 3, 5. Give me a second, I got a lot of bookmarks. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because this world's going to tell you to lean on your own understanding and God's word is saying, no, you don't. Trust my word because it is the truth. And his word will satisfy your soul. His word will satisfy your soul. Now this picture here, I love it because it's, it has one of my favorite psalms. Psalm 1 to 19, I promise you we'll get to it. Um, but that's not what this reminds me of here. Uh, psalm uh, 42 is what this reminds me of. Actually, I pray this prayer quite frequently. Um, psalm 42 Verses 1 and 2, it says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When, I, when can I go and meet with God? As the deer pants for water, so my soul pants for you. And like that, Psalm 63, 1 says a very similar thing. And I encourage you to meditate on things like that. You know, if something speaks to you like that, just meditate on it. Let that sink in. It says, you, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. My soul, my very being thirsts for you. My very being thirsts for you. And okay, lastly... I want to encourage you with Psalm 119. As we have this, I told you I'd get to it. All right. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. There is 176 verses, so I hope you're ready because we're going to read them all. <laughs> totally kidding. Totally kidding. But I, I had picked this. Yeah, you, you could need to. I have done it. Now, understand, you don't have to read every single, you know, the entire thing of Psalm 119. If you want to, go for it. I have done it. But a lot of times I just read it, you know, honestly, it's the Hebrew alphabet. So the psalmist here has wrote about how wonderful God's word is in every single letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it would be like us saying from A to Z, every single letter he picks apart and he says how wonderful God's word is. So if you're struggling with the word being dry, I encourage you to pick up Psalm 119. You don't have to read all 176 verses, but if, he, if you're reading it and it just keeps going and it keeps nourishing that thirst, Read it all. But I want to read to you Psalm 119, 105. And it says this. It says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. He will guide you. He will quench that thirst. And he's our protector, provider. And oh man, I tell you, I just love that verse. It came rushing into me whenever I was preparing for this. He is a lamp for your feet. He will guide your path. He will not leave you alone. He sends you the Holy Spirit. He sends us a community of believers. He sends us a community that is beyond the Core Christian Church. It spreads throughout the whole entire world. So I want to encourage you with that. We're going to have a time of invitation. I invite you, if you haven't believed or you are coming to believe in Jesus Christ, you can come and you can talk with us. It doesn't mean you have to come right up here up front. If you feel convicted to do that, do so. But you can talk to us after church. It doesn't have to just be me. Um, you know, Bill, our minister, which he's not here today, but he'll be back next week. You can always talk with him or any of our elders. Um, we have, you know, Billy and Rich and Bill Conover and Ryan, a.k.a. my dad and myself. Um, you can come talk with us. We can chat. You can tell us what we're going through. We can pray for you. We would love to do that. Um, but I encourage you to come and be fed. And my prayer is that you don't become dry. So let's pray in light of that. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. I pray that anything that I have said from here this morning that does not line up with your word, that it would be squashed out. And Father, those that, things that have been said that speak truth to who you are, God, I pray that they take root and Lord, that you would water those roots and they would spring up just into beautiful glory for your kingdom. Father, I pray for each one. I pray that if they have uh, been struggling with some dryness of reading the word, Lord, that you would quench that dryness and that it, their soul would just pant like the deer pants for water, for your word. 
God, ignite the fire within us. Teach us to fight like Jesus does with our, our, on our knees, with our hands lifted high, praising you, asking, seeking. Jesus quite often went off and prayed alone and asked guidance for the Father. So as solely as he relied on you, God, may we rely on Jesus. We come here to see Jesus. And Father, I pray that you be with each one who is uh, here today and who are online and that you would uh, just light their path. Father, thank you for this time that we get to come and speak to you and praise you and worship you. And God, we bless you. And we love you so very much. We thank you mostly for your son, Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with us? you have come here this morning to worship with us. I encourage you to be encouraged and be a part of community and uh, be invested in his word. Thank you all for coming. Let's sing. <laughs> 